In the previous video, we looked at the first 10 plates of the Egyptian Book of the Coming Forth by Day and how it connects to Bible prophecy. In this video, we'll look at the next series of plates, which seem to list a kind of code. It repeats a pattern of three gods, and this pattern of three gods repeats seven times, which connects it to the previous mention of the seven shining ones, which refers to the seven stars in the book of Revelation who are, as the Bible says, the Pleiades star system. So this pattern of three times seven in the Egyptian text does seem to connect to the prophecy about the Pleiadians. So let's just go through this quickly. You can pause to read anything that I don't cover. The first says, At the entrance sit three gods, the first having the head of a hare, the second the head of a serpent, and the third the head of a crocodile. The first holds an ear of corn, and each of the others a knife. Then it gives the names of the doorkeeper, the watcher, and the herald, which indicates that is what these three gods represent. So, we'll put those here. The first group of three are a rabbit holding corn, which appears to be the doorkeeper, a serpent holding a knife as the watcher, and a crocodile holding a knife as the herald. Then it gives a second set of three gods, the first with the head of a lion, the second with the head of a man, and the third with the head of a dog. Each one, it says, holds a knife. And then again, it lists the names of the doorkeeper, the watcher, and the herald. So the second set of three is a lion holding a knife as the doorkeeper, a human holding a knife as the watcher, and a dog holding a knife as the herald. Then the third set of three is a jackal, a dog, and a serpent. The first holds an ear of corn, and the others hold knives. And then again, the names of the doorkeeper, the watcher, and the herald. So we have in the third set of three, a jackal holding corn as the doorkeeper, a dog holding a knife as the watcher, and a serpent holding a knife as the herald. Next, we have a fourth set of three gods, a human, a hawk, and a lion the first holding corn and the others holding knives, and again the names of the doorkeeper, the watcher, and the herald. So the fourth set of three are a human holding corn as the doorkeeper, a hawk holding a knife as the watcher, and a lion holding a knife as the herald. And then it says, I am the mighty bull, the son of Osiris. So remember the bull represents the constellation Taurus, which is where the Pleiades star system is. So this seems to be a confirmation that it is referring to the seven stars here, and we'll see more connections to that in a minute. But next we have the fifth set of three gods, a hawk, a human, and a snake, each holding a knife, and again the names of the doorkeeper, the watcher, and the herald. So in the fifth set of three, we have a hawk holding a knife as the doorkeeper, a human holding a knife as the watcher, and a snake holding a knife as the herald. In the sixth set, we have a jackal, a dog, and another dog, the first holding corn and the others holding knives, and again, the names of the doorkeeper, the watcher, and the herald. So the sixth set of three is a jackal holding corn as the doorkeeper, a dog holding a knife as the watcher, and another dog holding a knife as the herald. And finally, in the seventh set, there is a hare, a lion, and a man. The first and second hold a knife, and the third holds corn. And again, the names of the doorkeeper, the watcher, and the herald. So, the seventh set of three consists of a rabbit holding a knife as the doorkeeper, a lion holding a knife as the watcher, and a human holding corn as the herald. Okay, so remember the three groups that we talked about in the Revelation 20 video, specifically in Revelation 20 verse 4. The souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God also whoever had not worshipped the beast. So again, there are three groups of survivors listed here. The first two groups are the two witnesses, and the third group consists of those who do not worship the beast. We go into more detail about this in the Revelation 20 video linked here. These three groups are also mentioned in Ezekiel 5, 1 through 5. It's talking about the hair, which is Jerusalem, which refers to New Jerusalem in Revelation 21. These are those who inherit the earth after the asteroid impact. The first group, it says, will be burned with fire. The second group, it says, to smite about it with a knife. And the third group will be scattered in the wind. 
Everyone else, it says, who is not in those three groups will be bound and cast into the fire. And this refers to the binding and burning of the tares in Matthew 13. The burning is the asteroid impact, as explained in other scriptures. And then verse 12 of Ezekiel 5 clarifies even more what this means. The first group will die in the pestilence and the famine. The second group will fall by the sword. And the third group will be scattered into the winds. So again, we're told two out of three will die. But Revelation tells us they will be resurrected later. This is explained in Revelation 11, 7 through 12, where it says the two witnesses will be killed by the beast at the end of the 1260 days, lie dead in the great city for three and a half days, and then ascend up at the end of those three and a half days. This is explained in more detail in the Revelation 11 video linked here. Also in Revelation 24 and 5, where it says those who are beheaded for the witness of Jesus and the word of God will live and reign with Christ for a thousand years. This, it says, is the first resurrection. So, the ascension of the two witnesses is the first resurrection. The three groups are the two witnesses and the multitude. The two witnesses die at the asteroid impact, and the multitude are taken to the four winds of heaven, Matthew 24, 31. Revelation points us to the Egyptian texts, which also bring up the three groups. Also, the Egyptian texts talk about the place in heaven where the feast will be, and the feast seems to be represented by the corn. So I've highlighted the corn in blue on this chart. Notice the corn only occurs in five of the seven groups, and in each of those five groups, it's only one of the three. And this is consistent with Ezekiel 5. Only one out of three escape the knife. Only one out of three go to the feast in heaven. The corn appears twice with the human, twice with the jackal, and once with the rabbit. The rest of the symbols hold knives. Two out of seven times, the knives cover all three groups, and the rest of the time, the knives cover two out of the three. So just as the Bible prophecy says, two out of three will die. The symbols that always hold knives are the serpent, the crocodile, the lion, the dog, the hawk, and the snake. The only one that always holds the corn is the jackal. The human holds the knife two out of four times and the corn two out of four times. The rabbit holds the knife one out of two times and the corn one out of two times. So both the human and the rabbit are holding the knife half of the time and the corn the other half of the time. The seven groups of three also connect to the seven angels of the seven churches in Revelation 1 through 3. We discussed this in more detail in a previous video linked here. But the seven angels are the seven stars, which are the Pleiades star system in the constellation of the bull. So when it says they are the sons of Osiris, which is the bull, and right after that it lists the seven sets of three, it seems to be referring to the judgment of the seven stars, the Pleiadians. Then it goes on to talk about a lion-headed deity that has a serpent above it. The Bible says the lion is the first beast. And then it talks about the Lady of Heaven who devours with fire. This Lady of Heaven is also mentioned in the Bible as the Queen of Heaven. And then it talks about a cow deity, which again connects to the constellation Taurus. And it says, she who prevails with knives. So again, it's talking about the watchers that we looked at in the previous video, the watchers who bear slaughtering knives. The Bible confirms that the watchers come from a faraway country in Jeremiah 4.16, and this faraway country is at the end of heaven, Isaiah 13.5. So now the Egyptian texts seem to be confirming that the queen of heaven represents the Pleiadians. And then it talks about a man holding a knife seated in a shrine with a serpent above it. And this seems to represent the humans who work with the serpent. And then notice this one. It says, The lady of light, man knows neither her breadth nor her height. There is a serpent thereover whose size is not known. So again, the Egyptian text seems to be talking about the image technology. The image mentioned in Revelation 13, which is the clothing of light in Psalm 104, 1 and 2, the serpent charming enchantment in Isaiah 3.20, and the garment spotted by the flesh in Jude 1.23. This is only a few out of at least 22 references in the Bible. You can see the videos covering the image for more details on that. 
But the Bible says the image is made with microchips. In other words, it's microtechnology and it involves the manipulation of light. So this lady of light in the Egyptian texts clearly say her true height and her true breadth the humans cannot see. In other words, again, the Pleiadians are wearing an image covering which disguises their true form, making them look human. And then it clarifies that it's a serpent that is under the covering of light. It is a serpent whose size is not known. So again, in the Bible, in Genesis 3, the actual definition of the word serpent means image of serpent. Then the Egyptian text mentions the hawk who wears the crowns of the north and south, which again is referenced in Daniel 11 as the kings of the north and south. And then again, it talks about the lady of the knife who dances in blood, the terrible one, the lady of the rainstorm who plants ruin in the souls of men, the devourer of the dead bodies. She hides what she has made. She carries away hearts. And then it speaks of the knife and says, it has secret plots and counsels. So this is talking about the lady in heaven, the lady with the cow head. Remember, Jeremiah 58 through 13 tells us Babylon is a cow. We're also told Egypt is a cow in Jeremiah 46, 20. Babylon the Great is both Egypt and Sodom in Revelation 11, 8. So the lady of heaven with the head of a cow is Babylon the Great in Bible prophecy. She's called the lady of heaven in the Egyptian texts and is called the Queen of Heaven in Jeremiah chapters 7 and 44, and she's called the Queen in Revelation 18.7. It says she dances in blood and devours dead bodies. And this is referenced in the Bible as well. We covered this in the video on vampires in the Bible linked here. Then the Egyptian texts make another reference to the rescue again. It says, I have received my crown at my rising and I have power to sit upon my throne, upon the throne of my father. I have drowned the serpent. So again, the Egyptian texts talk about the rising and the crowning of those who defeat the serpent and sit upon the throne of the father. And that is referenced in the Bible as the rescue of the multitude at the asteroid impact. So we'll leave off there for now and continue this next week. Please, if you find this enlightening, consider providing support using the link below. And thank you to those who make this work possible. For more information on the fulfillments of the Bible prophecy, see the link here. I hope you're doing well, and I will talk to you later.